a very confident Alan Green. And earlier tonight, we invited you to respond to our text message poll question where we asked you if you thought Alan Green will make it to the Super 6 semifinals. Well, the results are in, and you voted no. Apparently, people feeling that without that extra fight, not enough time for him to make it, but he is a knockout puncher, and you get three points for a knockout win if you can get one. Well, you know, win, lose, or draw tonight, he's still not out of it. I mean, you can have one last gallant effort against Mikael Kessler that gets him in that uh, semifinal, so. Got two fights to get it. So we are ready for the main event of the evening, the WBA Super Middleweight Championship, Andre Ward against Alan Green. The last fight of group stage two of the Super Six World Boxing Classic and a fight critical to both men's advancement to the tournament semifinals. Now let's go up into the ring to the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the Super Six World Boxing Classic. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, here is the challenger tonight making his tournament debut. Please welcome Sweetness Alan Green. Alan Green, a six to one underdog, enters the ring confident and well prepared for the biggest moment of his life. He's waited patiently. He's waited angrily for this golden opportunity. And tonight, he plans on showing the world in spectacular fashion that he's the best super middleweight on the planet. You know, he's coming in right now. He has sweat on him. He has to remember the struggle. I mean, when it, he was watching these guys perform on television, the feeling that was in his heart, he has to use that, channel that as a positive to dig down deep to get this victory tonight. And, you know, in our fighter meetings, uh, we saw maybe a revealing moment into his uh, psyche because uh, he apparently had a little piece of paper there, and he wrote on it over and over again, and the new... <laughs> And the new champion, and, and it was like as if he was channeling it into writing to see what Jimmy Lennon would sound like, but he left the paper there, and then when Andre Ward came, we discovered it later, Andre Ward wrote a big knot over it. So, <laughs> little battle on the paper, these two fighters. <laughs> Alan Green enters the big stage after eight years, his first opportunity at a world title. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Oakland's own WBA World Champion, Andre S.O.G. Ward. Andre Ward returns to the site of his greatest accomplishment. Last November, he turned in a mesmerizing performance against Mikkel Kessler to win his first world title. Tonight, he defends it for the first time once again in his hometown against a man hell-bent on taking it. You know, a lot going on here tonight. And one of the things is Andre Ward, uh, who is a great student of not only the game, but everything happening in boxing, is keenly aware that no one has lost at home yet in the Super Six tournament. He really wants to make sure that doesn't happen here tonight. And even saying that, Al, I mean, one of the more focused yeah. uh, young men I've you know, had the luxury to meet, he just really understands where he's at the moment and he's seizing it you know he's grounded he's very religious and he takes that in the ring with him each and every time out oracle arena oakland california once again a dynamic energetic crowd ready to root on their hometown hero andre ward ward started boxing at the age of nine he played high school football strong safety had an opportunity to eventually play college football, but passed it up to stay with boxing. And there, a tribute to our colleague, Nick Charles. Nick, of course, convalescing and uh, in his battle with cancer. And uh, uh, Andre Ward sending out a, a wonderful message to Nick and echo uh, a sentiment we all echo here at Showtime. Andre, son of God, Ward. Yeah. 
So that brings us to the numbers. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Some interesting numbers here. And one of the most interesting is the weight for Alan Green at 166 pounds. This is someone who wants to fight at the light heavyweight division when his tournament's over. He may have overshot the mark by a couple of pounds and maybe, maybe even overtrained. Now he's got the big reach advantage, Alan Green, and that's important because he wants to establish his jab in this fight. Alan Green told us he came in at 166 because he wanted to make sure that he made weight. Will the reduction cost him? And the rules for tonight's WBA championship fight. The unified rules with a few wrinkles. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Now here in California, the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. You can't be saved by the bell in any round. After four rounds, if there is a clash of heads or some other foul that causes the fight to be stopped, they would go to the scorecards. And one more caveat to that, they will score any partially concluded rounds. So here at Oracle Arena in Oakland, California, we are ready for Andre Ward versus Alan Green. Let's go back to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the whole. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the home of the Golden State Warriors, the Oracle Arena here in Oakland, California, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Goosen Tudor Promotions, Antonio Leonard Productions, DeBella Entertainment, and Showtime, sponsored by Corona, the Oakland Tribune, and the River Rock Casino. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, President Herberto Mendoza, Supervisor Guy Jutras, along with the California State Athletic Commission, the Chairman John Frierson, Executive Officer George Dodd. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Cesar Banda and Dr. Smith Ketchum. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns, Valinda Stell and Terry Burton. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. From Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From La Paz, Baja California Sur, Mexico, Alfredo Polanco. And from Santa Clara, California, Marty Salmon. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Raul Kais Sr. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. It's the Super Six World Boxing Classic. It's scheduled 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Oakland, California, it's showtime. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks with white trim and fighting out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He weighed in at a trim and ready 166 pounds with a record of 29 wins, one loss. He has 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his first attempt at a world title, please welcome the challenger, currently ranked the WBA number four world super middleweight contender, introducing uh, sweetness, Alan Green. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim. He is the Bay Area kid and boxing's pride of Oakland, California. He weighed in at 167 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 21 wins, no losses, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the first defense of his world title. Please welcome the 2004 Olympic gold medalist and the undefeated WBA super middleweight champion of the world. Here is the undefeated Andre S.O.G. Once 
to get a referee in charge, Raul Kais Sr. now to give instructions. You have your instructions downstairs, remember. Punches here on up are fine because both your punches are a little high. Now shake hands, good luck to both of you. Ward versus Green. They tried to leave me out of this tournament, but now that I'm in, it's payback time, and it starts with you, Golden Boy, in your hometown. Nobody is taking what belongs to me, including this trash-talking bully. You think I'm soft, big fella? I got something for you right now. Ready? Ready? Box! Round one. A key point early, this is an 18-foot ring. It was the last time when Ward fought Kessler. It looks kind of small to us, but Ward was able to use it effectively that night to give movement, and he'll want to do it tonight. Alan Green, the taller fighter, he's got a very mean left hook, stiff right hand, but he wants to work off his jab, Antonio. Yes, he does, and right now he's in good position. I mean, he's using his jab effectively right now, and I didn't expect uh, Andre Ward to give this much ground so, you know, this early. Ward was very successful against Kessler using that jab to the body. Looks like he's trying to implement the same strategy early. And Ward told us, Al, that he was respectful in terms of what Alan Green does well. Yeah, he knows that Green is a big puncher with the left hook. And and step back and they're in a clinch now. This is when he says Alan ball. Green's left hook is dangerous. Look how he kept okay. his hands up. He says Green throws that punch out of clinches, and you have to be careful of it, and he was right there. Alan Green trying to cut off the ring. Andre Ward moving backwards. He mixed it up against Kessler the last time we were in Oakland in November. He may have got caught with a short jab. He goes, Ward goes down to the body now with a double jab. I, I would advise Green to bring that left hand up a little bit. I mean, you don't want to give a fighter as fast as Andre Ward a target. And right now, that, that, right, that left side is a target for Andre Ward. And early in this fight, Ward working on the inside, which Green and his people felt he wouldn't. They thought he would only hold on the inside, Stop. and he's really not. Box. And don't Green, push his head down, son. Don't push his head down. As we mentioned, no for that left hook. But Andre Ward told us that he throws it at particular times. Yeah, he doesn't Step set it up. Him. He Step throws it more, he said, in quotes and desperation, but I think Stop. what it really Stop. is is a hey, single hey, punch. Stop me. Stop. Let's go. Now, there's heads Box. coming together. Remember in the Kessler fight, and Jack Reese, the referee, was criticized by some for allowing Andre Ward, they think, to use his head. Let him go, Allen. Let him go, Allen. Get your hand out, Andre. 17 seconds remaining in the first, scheduled for 12, the WBA Super Middleweight title. Undefeated Andre Ward in white and blue, the champion, the challenger, with only one loss, Alan Green. Stop at the bell. And that's the end of round one. And what are the keys to this fight? Well, for Andre Ward, he's like a jump pitcher in baseball, keeping you off balance. He needs to give Green lots of looks and angles and maybe switch to lefty. He's not a one-punch knockout artist. Combinations are his best bet. And Green likes to set his own pace. Ward needs to make him fight three minutes of every round. For Alan Green, he has lapses of concentrations in fight, and he can't afford that. To make another baseball analogy, Green can't just look for a home run punch. He has to set it up by being busy. But he does need to try and land those left hooks we talked about. This is his big power source. Oracle Arena, Oakland, California, the home of Andre Ward. Ward following in the footsteps of many Olympic gold medal greats. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Sugar Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya, all going on to have very successful professional careers.
Hands are free, hands are free, gentlemen. For the first minute and 30 seconds of the first round, it looks as if Alan Green was onto something. He was backing uh, Andre Ward up with the jab. He was controlling it, but it seems at the end of that round, he got away from it. And Ward got busier. Hands are free. Go back and punch. Hands are free. Hands are free. Ward down, successful down, down, down. in that first round, jabbing to the midsection. Stop. Stop. Break. Keep your punches up both of you. What kind of Don't cumulative effect Let's can go. that have on a fighter? Oh, anytime you land a good shot to the body, it has an effect. You may not feel it for a couple rounds after that, but it, your legs get weary, and, and, and once your body goes, that head should follow. No, 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 no. Stop. Break. Gentlemen, thank you. Let's go. Now, Andre oh. Ward is not going to lefty yet in this fight. He said that he would do it from time to time. He thought he'd fight most of the fight as a righty, but in his last most of the fight as a righty, but in his last fight, Alan Green had some issues with Tarvis Sims, who was a crafty switch hitting fighter who also fought as a lefty. Hands are free, hands are free. Alan, get your hand back. Green winning a 10 round Stop. unanimous decision Stop. against Sims. You're both the identical you know twin brother of former up. WBA super welterweight world champion, Travis Sims. Now, if you, I'm sorry, if you see how this fight is going, it seems as if Andre Ward is initiating all of the contact. And it seems as if Alan Green is waiting his turn to get started. That's the type of fight that he'll never win. He has to punch with the champion and mix it up. Take your chances. Green said he would put on slow, steady pressure during the course of this fight. He hasn't exactly done that, as Antonio pointed out. But he did say, and then John David Jackson, his trainer, said it might take a couple rounds for that to develop. We'll see. Punch, get your hand out, Alan. Let him go. For Alan Green, although he's a big puncher, he can't sit and wait for yeah. one big shot. Absolutely. Not against a classy and slick boxer like Andre Ward. And you've got to punch some. You're going to come here to Oakland against the champion and beat him. You've got to throw punches. Nice right hand by Ward. Ward standing right in front, goes to the body. Now he eats a left hook by Green. And Green needs to do more of that. Initiate the contact. Step to the champion. And you got to take his title, especially here in Oakland. Alan Green getting in this tournament by virtue of... Jermaine Taylor having to withdraw after his fight with Arthur Abraham. And a great opportunity for him and one that he says he'll make the most of. Now, there was a left hook a moment ago by Andre Ward. They just want to get into a left hooking contest, though. Hands are free, gentlemen. Hands are free. Let him go. Seven go seconds remaining in the second round. Stop at the bell. Both fighters starting to warm up now. Time now to join the third member of the fourth member of our team, rather, ringside, Jim Gray. All right, Gus, thank you very much. I'm here with another participant in the Super 6. He will fight September 25th against Andre Ward. This is Andre Durrell. We saw him last against Arthur Abraham when he won by disqualification. You just told me you're more nervous almost as much as you're fighting. Why? Well, I know the feeling of coming out. You know, I know the feeling of getting ready. I know the feeling of having that adrenaline pumping. So when they were coming out, I just felt it too. Fully recovered from the disqualification when Abraham hit you when you were down? Fully recovered as far as I know. You know, I'm still uh, punching the same. I'm still acting the same. I'm still as sweet as I was before. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about the situation. You talked to Andre Ward quite a bit. You guys are very good friends. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be difficult to fight your friend on September 25th? Well, from a personal level, I can't let it get personal. This is business. And that's just what it is. It's business. So when it comes down to fight time, he knows what to do. I, knows what, I know what to do. So we'll get in the ring and we'll do it. Nothing personal. Do you often beat up your friends in business? If they're paying me millions of dollars, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Andre Durrell, we look forward to seeing you on thank September you. 25th. Thanks a lot. Man. Back to you, Gus. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Third round scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Middleweight World Stop. Title. That's 168 Stop. pounds. Andre Ward, the champion, son of God in the blue and white. Alan Green, the challenger from Tulsa, Oklahoma in white and black. You know, everybody thinks it's Let easy to hit Andre Ward before they fight him. And then they find out it's not, and that's what Alan Green's finding Let out right him. now. And I don't know why they would think Stop. it's so easy for a guy Break with this down. type of quickness. I don't know. This type of reflex, reflexes to be easy to hit. Now, we mentioned about the mental advantage mm -hmm. and the mental game plan that this fight is going to take for Alan Green to win. I didn't like the fact that he tapped Andre Ward Hands before the end of the round, saying congratulate him for a good job well done. You can never become champion with that type of attitude. Especially a guy who in the build-up 
was very loquacious and, and was really taking it mentally, Dan. Now Alec Green on the ropes. Andre Ward putting that forehead right on his chest and pinning him. And Alec Green, guys, he just doesn't look sharp. Is this the magnitude of the moment? Maybe it, it, it's giving him some jitters. I don't know if it's the magnitude of this moment. I think it's more Andre Ward uh, is really confusing him right now. And, you know, like I said, I don't mind a guy being boasters, boasters. I don't mind a guy talking trash, but you got to back it up in the moment. Andre Ward told us there are times in this fight I'm going to be fighting right off his chest. He doesn't expect me to do it, and he's doing it now, and, and Green and his people said he won't fight me on the inside. He's doing it now. And they thought, they really underestimated Andre Ward toughness, and uh, that's the part that I thought they didn't approach this fight correctly. They're in there with a real champion tonight in the show. Terrific looking inside fighting by Ward. Look at him. Step over. Uppercut. The last time we saw him against Kessler, he said to us that I will make the transformation from boxer to fighter, and he's continuing to evolve with this kind of style. Beautiful. He really is. And, you know, let's remember, Alan Green, big puncher, so while the fight has started well, his power is always there waiting. But you can't use your power when somebody's off your chest like this. Under Ward's fascinating. I mean, total change in philosophy because he knows it'll work. And he also said in the fighters meeting that he'll take the strength away from Alan Green, and he's doing that right now. He's taking his reach away right now. Green cannot get any room as Moore continues to dig that left hook to the body and the head. And he looks at Alan Green as if to say, you didn't expect this, man. foreshadowing of this the other day and he pinned green against the ropes and was able to free his left hand especially and there's alan green ripping an uppercut but most of the good work like that hook was done by andre ward on the inside a surprise antonio i think to the green camp well it definitely a surprise to the green camp most better it's better than alan green <laughs> Let alone the camp. He sat in that corner no for the entire round. Yeah. No That's go. not a good look. And I'm going to tell you, gentlemen, be on the lookout for that excuse why he didn't perform up to the level that he thought he would or that he talked he would. I mean, uh, he has to step up to the plate right now. He has to fight. Let it go. Nice jab by Ward. Let's go. Fourth round. And for Alan Green, I think distance is the answer right now, at least to give him a chance to land some of those big hooks and those big punches. And the green jab, there it is, has been, for the most part, absent. He needs to use that punch. Green with the reach advantage. Four inches. 75-71. Ward, though, tight defense. And he shows something we haven't seen. Fighting Alan, inside. Get your hand out. Get your hand out. Get get you guys are not clicking. Nice right hand, followed by digging left hook by Ward. Nice Ward's body work has Keep been your hands very up special in this fight. Andre Ward, Olympic gold medalist, undefeated, defending his title for the first time. Left hook, right hand. No answer from Green. He looks confused. And you know what it is? It seems as if Alan Green has to get set to punch. He should always be in punching position so that he can get those short combinations off. As long as he let Alan, uh, uh, Andre Ward dictate this pace, I think he's in a, 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 a he has a one punch knockout chance of winning. That's about it. No, stop! And a reminder that for whatever it's worth, Green went down to 166 pounds. Did he drain himself by going too far down? I know it's only an extra pound or two, but that can make a difference. Remember Tommy Hearns against Ray Leonard many years ago, who overshot the mark by a couple of pounds, and he's trying to get to 147. Emmanuel Stewart even admits nice left hook that time by Green, acknowledged by Ward. That hurt him a little. 
but he keeps coming forward. Emmanuel Stewart acknowledging that he trained Tommy too much prior to the fight, and those two pounds drained him in the 13th and 14th rounds. Yeah, we don't know if that's the case here, but it could be. There's a nice Patrick body shot by Alan Green. Green. He's starting to throw a few Patrick punches Green. with conviction Stop. now, and that's important. Stop. Yeah, no. he, he needs to Stop. open up a little bit. No. Take no. That's important. Stop. Yeah, no. he, he needs to open English? up a little bit. No. Take no. more chances. No. And I'll no. tell you, if he just Take punched hands. with Andre Keep Ward, it it'll on. make a Let's tremendous go. difference in, the, in, in how these rounds are taking place. Green telling us that he was going to take his time. He was not going to rush into anything with free. Ward. Get your hand on, Andre. Ward your hand telling on. us that from round six, seven, eight, and nine, he knows that Green is going to have a mental no, no, lapse. No, that wasn't low. It was a good punch. He's seen it on tape before. At Stop at the bell. Let's go. Nice right hand getting in by Green. And that is the end of the round. Now you can follow the Super 6 World Boxing Classic in a new interactive way by playing our bracket challenge game on sports.show.com. Fill out your own bracket and pick the champion. As the tournament progresses, compete with others for points based on correct predictions and enter the sweepstakes for a chance to win a trip for four to the Super 6 Championship in 2011. Go to sports.show.com and start playing now. Also, check out our links to Twitter and Facebook where you can follow all our Showtime sports events with regular updates and information about all our programs. Now, Alan Green did land this very good left hook, a nice counter left hook, and Ward gives him credit for it there, but then keeps talking to him. Coming in, trying to play some mind games. That's what Green needs to do. He needs to do a lot more of that. That was one of his better rounds. He got close, but I don't think he won that round. I agree with you. Ward quickly starts out going to the body. Green answers. Alan Green trying to become only the third Oklahoma resident to win a world title. The others were Sean O'Grady, who won the lightweight title, and Tommy Morrison, who won a version of the heavyweight title. This, of course, Let him go, uh, Alan. Uh, Alan Green from Tulsa, Green. Oklahoma. No push, no push. Guys. Tommy Morrison fighting for that world title in 1993. Get your hand up. You know, Alan Green, is when he's throwing at some of these left hooks to the body, he's starting to throw them with a, uh, some commitment. Just needs to do more of it. Alan Green has won his last six fights. Four by way of knockout. Now he moves in. Lead left hook landing for Ward. He misses with the looping right hand. You know, Antonio, it's a real conundrum. And Gus, it's a real conundrum for Ward. He can land that lead left hook, but doesn't want to throw too many because he doesn't want to get the hooking contest. And you look at the uh, sports media punch numbers, uh, total punches, and you see Ward doing very well. A lot of head and shoulder movement now by Green. Ward, tight defense, guard held high. And those numbers, you know, we would expect Andre Ward to be a little busier in this fight. Uh, he, that's the nature of what he does. Let him go, Allen. Let him and go. So let far, him that's been the case. Nice right hand by Green as he stepped around. Excuse me, by Ward as he stepped around. And Alan Green is not leading off with that jab at all in this fight. That's a key element, and he, he said it to fist, us, and we know fist, it's man. true. And, and I know he has a good jab. Yes, he does. And he's in position right now to be sticking that jab yeah. out, but he's not doing anything. He's chasing Andre Ward right now, and that's just not going to get it done. he got to let his hands go. And it's a number, it's a, you know, we saw the punch numbers before. It's a lot about volume in this fight. And Alan Green can't throw that small amount of punches in a round and expect to win it against a busy fighter like Green. Uh, Ward. But, but you've seen this with Alan Green before, an inability to let his hands go. Yeah, it, it happened against Miranda. Of course, he had physical issues for that fight. Uh, we've seen it before, and it's it's Have one of his big issues. Break. Stop! Break! Ten seconds, stop at the bell. Then. Box! Stop at the bell. Five seconds to go. Left hook connected by Ward, followed by a straight jab. Monica.
Monica Gibbs, Alan Green's mom, ringside. So proud of her son to be able to advance to this level and fight for a world title. You saw the press row scoring. Steve Kim of MaxBoxing.com, Ray Markarian from the SweetScience.com, and Colin Seymour from the Coastal World, or from uh, here in uh, San Francisco, and uh, all with an edge, obviously, for Andre Ward. Ward working the free hand. He's done a great job fighting inside tonight, taking away all of Reed's length. Ooh, nice left hook to the body and left hook up top as Reed pivots off the ropes. But Andre Ward getting in a lot of work to Alan Green's body. You know, Alan Green seems as if he's thinking too much. I mean, it comes a time where you have to get in the zone and react. You got to trust your ability, trust your skills, and trust the hard work that you put into. And that statistic you just saw, you're, you're absolutely right. That's what that statistic we saw. Very revealing. Ward has won the battle of the jabs dramatically, and that's really hurting Alan Green's chances. Left hook, right hand by Ward. Green looks like his legs buckle for a second. Don't push his head down, Andre. Hands are free. And Virgil Hunter told us he guaranteed us that there would come a point where Alan Green, after Ward put the pressure on him, may quit. Well, he said he may panic a bit and could quit trying to win. I mean, that's a, a you know, it's a harsh that's statement, and Virgil Hunter really not given to those kind of statements, but right now, Green in all kinds of trouble. You know what, Alan? Nice right hand by Ward. Green. He actually said. Oh, left hook by Ward. Uppercut by Ward. He is really showing a multitude of skill. He digs in the body again. Andre Ward always first. The uppercut gets through. Right hand landing for Ward. Now he goes to the back line. Left hook. He's beating him up. Andre Ward called Green a bully at the weigh-in yesterday, but right now the bully is getting bullied. Short left hook by Wood. 30 seconds to go. Look at him use his shoulder to create space. Right hand, another straight left hook. And Andre Ward is putting it on Alan Green. Get your hand on Andre. attention with that very good right hand that bounced off the ear area of Alan Green and then from that point on later on and there's the combination punching by Green and then he drove him drove him to the ropes and then Antonio he went to work and you know what just he's a sitting duck right here he has his feet parallel he can't generate any power point he can't even counter punch he has the look of a rejected fighter right now well, he can't generate any power point. He can't even counter punch. He has the look of a rejected fighter right now. Ooh, big shot. 
And you know, he gets just enough room to punch, as Gus pointed out, using getting a little space just enough to punch, Andre Ward. And the quote that Vern just said in the, in the fighters meeting that he may not get knocked out, but you'll see in his face that he checked out a long time before this fight is over. And it's happening right now. Alec Green refuses to move his hands. He can't compete with Ward inside. Let him go, and he let looks him go. like a confused fighter as we start the seventh round. Now, Andre Ward's been down once in his career against Darnell Boone in 2005, go, was hit by an uppercut. And we've seen Green try to land them, but I'll tell you what, nothing strong coming from Alan Green that would create a knockdown like that. Round seven, scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Middleweight title here in Oakland. Once again, Ward moving forward, throwing the heavier shots. He goes back downstairs. Andre Ward has shown feet, Watch your feet. incredible versatility in wow. this fight. Hands are free yeah, and in this tournament. Yeah. Get your hand on yeah, it, it seems like he has it all, the total package. And, and what I like more so than anything is that killer instinct. I mean, the kid fights hard every second of every round. How can you stop that? And he's not a giant puncher, so he needs to put all those punches together. Nice jab, followed by a right hand. Reed just eats it and says nothing. Lead uppercut as Ward trips. There was an example. And his I'm sorry, Gus. There was an example. Alan Green should have rushed him and gone after uh, Ward. He had an opportunity there, and he just couldn't. I mean, right now, Alan Green is catching, box, box. And, and Andre Ward is throwing. He got to start throwing back. I mean, and uh, if he's going to have a chance to land that punch that, uh, you know, offset this fight. Now he changes the southpaw. Close that hand, Andre. Close that hand. First time in the fight. And when he turns southpaw, Ward's not like other fighters. He's a traditional lefty. Now he's back ready. He throws power punches when he goes to the left-handed stance. Punch, hands are free. Step back and punch. Now Ward starts working inside again as Reed wisely gets off the ropes. When you see a fighter like Alan Green with this many fights under his resume, you know, this goes to show you that that amateur boxing experience is right now is paying off. I mean, it's all of this experience factor right now. I think it's giving Andre Ward the advantage in this fight tonight. Andre Ward, with what we've seen tonight, is starting to resemble Stop at the bell, a young Sugar Ray Leonard. Combination puncher, tough, gritty, outside, inside. Okay. Superb right hands. That was a lead right hand, and Alan Green with his left hand low and his head way up. And the referee just came over and said that there is a, a knot on the left side of Alan Green's head, but it was caused by a punch. Muffy. Muffy, baby. Muffy. Green's corner. Okay, stop. Wants stop, him to Green. throw shorter shots. John David Jackson, the former WBO junior middleweight and WBA middleweight world champion. And to add to the woes of Alan Green or potential woes, he has never been 12 rounds in his professional career. Ward is 4-1, or excuse me, Ward is 2-0 oh in 12-round uh, matches. Green has been 10, but never 12. And Alan Green just punch, can't get off punch. first. Head, he can't get off. And, and you know, Stop. it's not like he don't have the ability, but he's just not attempting. You know, I don't know if that's a hard gut check or what, but he needs to let his hands go and, like I said, throw with the champion. 
board. Now going back to basics. As Virgil Hunter said, fundamentals. He's using that short jab with high hands. Eighth round scheduled for 12. Step WBA foot, super middleweight spot, title. The champion in white and blue, Andre Ward. Fighting in his hometown of Oakland, California. Defending his title for the first time after taking it in mesmerizing fashion in November against Mikkel Kessler. The Viking Warrior. You know, that's a good, that's a, a very good adjective to use, mesmerizing. That's just what it was. And in a way, that's what we're seeing here tonight. It's hard to take your eyes off the way he's doing this. It's really interesting. I mean, it seems as if Alan Green is falling for all the feints, yeah. all the, the slips that, you know, punch, you know, stop. somewhere along the line, you got to let your hands go. And Alan Green seems like he's just stopped trying right now. He's frozen. And Ward's even taking chances like those wild left hooks and not worrying about the power of, of punch, Green. Sean, I believe Ward thinks he can knock him out. And I believe he's going to try for that knockout because he's still in a tournament that's uh, based on points. Three points for three points as you knock out your opponent. Although only a win will assure him a shot in the semifinals. But you want all those points. Ward really loading up on his punches, especially that right hand. And he's keeping Green on the ropes. Uppercut, shoulder, left hook. Now he works the free hand. Get your head out, when I was talking about experience, I meant right now, Alan Green should know that he needs to turn that, turn his opponent and escape out of that, that, that trap that he's in right now. Nice left hook by Ward again. Ward just taking away all of Green's height and length. And Raul Paez is appropriately not the separating them because they're working. Great inside fighting by Ward. Early and often by the champion. Super middleweight yeah, title, ninth round scheduled for 12. Up, Andre. Andre Ward has been the busier fighter from the very beginning. He's shown us a wrinkle tonight by fighting inside and being super effective against the taller, longer Alan Green. Now he pushes him on the ropes. Where Green has been comfortable just standing there. Yeah, I mean, he's going to look back at this tape and, and get the experience that he's going to learn from this fight. And he has to improve because this just won't get it. Take a deep breath. Let's go. And the interesting thing is, in his next fight, even though Nickel Kessler doesn't have quite the movement of Andre Ward, he's also a combination puncher. So Alan Green's going to face the same kind of volume of punching. And if the Nickel Kessler Green. shows up that showed up against Carl Frost, I mean, that's gonna, he's going to be in for a long, another long night. Alan Green. Green's going to have to be much more active. Watch your heads. And you know, Green was worried about Ward holding. It's been Green doing a little more holding in this. Uh, watch your heads. And you know, Green was worried about Ward holding. It's been Green doing a little more holding in this uh, last five or six rounds. What Alan Green has shown is he really is not very well schooled on fighting inside. Fundamentals. I mean, he has to, uh, you know, he has the power, but he don't know how to set that power up. You know, like I said, right now, he needs to be punching with the nice champion. He needs to be counter-punching. And what happened to the one-two? He's throwing the jab, but nothing's coming from, nothing's coming behind him. And he's only thrown 
in this fight, Green. On, 54 so jabs, your hands off, as opposed to 117 by Ward. So that's not a big number. It's almost as if the last thing Green expected for Ward to do was come here and fight him inside from the very yeah. beginning. Hands free. Yeah. That was the last thing he expected, and that's the first hands thing free, that guys. Ward did. Watch your heads. Ooh, nice right hand. Uppercut, though, by Green at the body, and that backed up Ward. That was a good body shot. Now uppercut by Ward. He can rest here. Stop! Break! Nice and relaxed. Deep breath. Hey, you know what, Doug? Let's go. Alan Green has been hit with, I believe, uh, Andre Ward's best punch. I mean, somewhere along the line, with everything at stake, you got to throw coffee to the wind, and you got to gamble. Green breathing out of his mouth now. He's tired. He weighed in at 166 for a 168 fight. Those two pounds could be very costly as this fight goes on. We're in the ninth round scheduled for 12. He looks sluggish. Ooh, beautiful right hand by Ward. Down. He doubles it up. has been taking place first of all for Andre Ward you see where a lot of the punches are landed a lot in the center but then not so much as in some previous rounds but you see where he was able to get those punches off against the ropes and in a couple of different spots land effectively for Alan Green much fewer uh, in terms of punches landed and uh, clearly uh, you know, uh, Ward doing well in both spots in the ring, the center and when he gets him on the, the gets the ropes. Yeah, yeah, and what, that shows complete control, Al. And so does this right hand by Andre Ward on the inside. Even in this, in these kinds of action sequences that aren't precise, Ward's getting the better of it. Yes, he is. Ward always first. Left hook, right hand, backs up three. You know, Andre Ward in this tournament has lost very few rounds. He won most of the rounds against Kester, and he's won pretty much every round here against Alan Green. Close that hand, baby. Close that hand. Double jab left hook by Ward. Steps off. Lead left hook. He misses. Break. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Thank you. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath, both of you. Box. And you look into the eyes of Alan Green and you just wonder if he's checked out. Hands are free, gentlemen. Box in there. His number of punches continue actually to go down in terms of the number of Green is throwing. So he may have Hands he may free, not have checked punch. out, but he's definitely questioning don't push him, don't everything leading up into this fight. And uh, that's that mental toughness that you need to have if you're going to be a champion. Jim Gray is sitting with Andre Durrell watching the fight. Jim. Andre, what's your assessment here? Were you aware that Andre Ward could fight keep so well up, on the inside? I, I knew he was going to come with a, ga a plus game plan either way. If he was going to fight on the inside, I knew he had a, a, a good game plan to do so. So, I mean, I wasn't aware of it, but he's coming out and he's handling his business. Are you surprised at Alan Green's performance or lack of one? Somewhat I am. You know, like Watch I said, camera. he came in this tournament, the underdog, the complete underdog. And he's not putting in the work that he needs to put in against Andre Ward, Andre Ward, the current world champion. And up until now, what is it that you have learned most that you're going to have to do against Ward? Um, be first. He's being first with Alan Green. I have to be first with him. It's going to be a battle of, of who be, who, who's first. You know, he's a boxer. I'm a boxer. Can't sit there that you must think because we'll pick each other apart. So who's ever first will be the most effective that night. Andre, thank you. We'll see you the 25th of September. No problem. Gus? Thank you, Jim. Andre Ward is taking away all Alan Green's leverage. He's keeping that forehead right on his chest. And I just want to compliment the young Andre Durrell yeah. for understanding what it takes yep. to fight a fighter with the talent and the gift of Andre Ward. And if Green would have approached this fight like he should have, he would have been on his P's and Q's tonight. Ward 
just keeping them pinned on the ropes. Green won't pivot off to create any space for himself. And you know, part of this, and, and before you said it, Antonio, and Gus, you've said it, part of this is just that people better not continue to underestimate Andre Ward. And Andre Durrell isn't. But I'm saying it's about Andre Ward, not just what the other guy doesn't do. One thing Andre Ward has in his favor, he's got an incredible corner, Virgil Hunter, and he is just beating the bricks off Ward now. Off Green now. Look at Green's demeanor as he walks back to the corner. That's a defeated fighter. landed is a striking number only three by Alan Green and 38 by Andre Ward that tells the whole story of this fight it tells who's been doing all the work who's been putting in the work <laughs> we enter the championship round Andre Ward once again coming out being first using his jab to set up the right hand generally as the rounds continue he'll back Alan Green up get him against the ropes and then really go hard inside. And this is a round Alan Green has never Alan seen Green before. He's Green. never been to the 11th round. It's a heck of a way to get there after 10 rounds he's lost. Left hook by Ward. No sense of desperation for Alan Green. No combination punches. No establishing of the jab. No shots to the body. Unfortunately, this fight has been uh, resembled a bit his fight against Miranda, which was his other loss. Uh, and we're assuming if he doesn't knock out Andre Ward, this one will be a loss. And uh, he was listless in that fight, and he's been, he's been very flat in this one as well. And you know, one thing about a bully, <laughs> they hate when someone fights back. That's right. <laughs> And, you know, part of the reason we're saying this, you know, Alan Green was very uh, loquacious going into this fight. He was very bold in his statements. And when you are bold in your statements, you've got to back it up. Now, Andre Ward with the 123 to go in the 11th is starting to throw the kitchen sink at Alan Green. I don't think Alan Green has thrown a punch in this round. Stop! Break! Deep breath, deep breath, Jeremy. Deep breath, let's go. Punch. Ward, another beautiful right hand by Ward. Ward is looking to secure a spot in the semis of this tournament, retain his title against Alan Green tonight. It looks like he's on his way to, do, to, to doing just that. And Green needs to still fight because he wants to be relevant in this Super 6 tournament. Yep. You know, one of the keys to victory at the beginning, I said, well, don't wait for the home run ball by Alan Green. And that's exactly what he's done. Instead of putting punches together, it looks like he's constantly looking for that one punch that might make a difference and just not throw it. I don't think he's looking for any punch. Well, not now, now no. his hands go. Early on, he was. Right. Oh, oh another left hook by Ward. Early on, he was. Right. And you see the attitude of Alan Green as if he's saying Ward isn't doing very much, although Ward has been beating him from the very beginning. I'll be surprised if Green has even won two rounds. Ward down in the body, now up top, using those shoulders, short right hand, steps up, and we're ready to head to the 12th round. Andre Ward, the champ, and he's showing why tonight. After all Said and done. No more talking. Go. 
quit aiming your right hand, work the jab, and go into him with the punches, okay? Don't load him up and crank him. Just put him together and he's going. Don't let him grab you. That's what he want to do so he can survive. He wants to grab you and hold you so he can survive. Keep your foot, put that, that foot work in and out, make you reach fall and forward, and then rush, and keep your balance and hit him with them shots. Oh, you only need one to get through, I'm telling you, man. Great Don't corner work by Virgil Hunter. I mean, that's excellent corner work. And here's the work on the inside by Andre Ward. He's used the uppercut so effectively during the course of this fight, and Green has not had an answer to it. And I'm wondering when Andre Ward is going to slow down. This guy has fought yeah. with the passion for each and every round, every minute of every round, and he's coming out in the 12th round to do the same thing. Lands that left hook to start the 12th. Ward coming in, lands a right hand. Look how he's listening to Virgil Hunter. He tried very hard in those fast sequence to not get tied up with, with uh, Green as Virgil is telling him, don't do that because you don't have a chance to land punches. And that's the mark of a good team. Trainer and, and fighter. How's it free, gentlemen? How's it free? Two twenty to go in the 12th and final round for the WBA Super Middleweight title. The champion has right, been Break. Deep incredible breath. tonight. Deep Andre Ward in the blue and white has shown us an ability to fight inside Step something punch, we did Hands not see, we haven't seen. As a matter of fact, it's the last Get thing that out, Alan Green would have expected. And it's been so effective, he's taken away his length, his height. Stop. And it's leverage. Nice and relaxed, gentlemen. Nice and relaxed. And like I said earlier, Gus, Alan Green has been catching all night. He's not throwing anything of nothing, much of nothing tonight. That lead right hand has also been effective for Ward. As Green continues to go, go, keep Alan. his left hand Step down. Back, Andre. Let him go, Alan. Stop. Great Break. Nice experience for Alan Protect Green. And Andre Ward has thrown over 170 more punches according to sports media's uh, punch numbers than Alan Green has. That's a big edge. And where's the desperation? Where is the I want to become a champion? Where is that no one can beat me in this tournament? Where's all that brass talk that Alan Green had in those fighter meetings? It's obvious. He un underestimated Andre Ward for this fight. And you know what, Antonio? You said that in our production meeting after the fighters had left. It's something that you kept reiterating and you're 100% right. He did underestimate this great young champion. Now I'm wondering, what does that do for uh, Alan Green? Nice uh, left hook by Ward. You know, he, he builds his reputation on intimidation. Where does that go in his next fight with Mikhail Kempner? What can he say after a fight and performance like this? He's got a lot of work to do. In the meantime, Andre Ward, the champion, as his hometown fans rise to their feet, continues to put it on Green. Another stiff left, left hook inside. Seconds to go. Uppercut. I'm talking about Moves his head over. Stop. Acknowledges the crowd. Acknowledges his greatness on this night. Andre Wall. the family celebrates. Just a little step ahead of the mix. You know, even even on the award celebrations are measured. <laughs> He's carefully walking around the ring and getting up. He's so consistent and so precise, even in celebration. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb tonight. Okay. And this guy reminds me of a young Roy Jones Jr. But he's doing it with better competition. He's dominating better competition. Yeah, and you know, fundamentally, he's a better fighter. Roy Jones, of course, a great athlete, and you know from fighting him, but one of the, the issues with Roy over the years is that he wasn't as good a fundamental fighter as people like. That's what Andre Ward is, but that's a very good analogy, I agree. Good,
Well, our inside the ropes for this fight isn't against the ropes, really, because throughout this fight, Alan Green languished on the ropes, and Andre Ward was able to work off his chest, giving angles to Andre to Alan Green, and also working the uppercut hooks, even short right hands, and, and working the body and the head. It, as round after round went on, even though Ward was effective in the middle of the ring as well, he would push Alan Green to the ropes, and he would work him on the inside and very effectively. Andre Ward, what a great performance again. Let's go inside the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision as all three judges scores about exactly the same, 120 to 108, all three in favor of the winner and still champion tonight, securing his place in the Super 6 semifinals, Andre S.O.G. With a shutout, a unanimous decision over Allen Green, and he secures his spot in the semifinal. Jim Gray is standing by with the champion. All right, Gus, thank you very much. Andre, congratulations. How are you able to dominate this fight from start to finish? Well, first of all, Jim, I got to give glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give me the strength to do the preparation and come in here and be victorious. You know what? I, I feel like Kobe the other night. I don't know how we got it done. We just worked hard. We prepared for Green. He's a hard puncher. We couldn't tell him that before the fight, but he's a hard puncher and he's very skilled. And I'm happy to come away with the victory. You called him a bully. You seem to be quite annoyed by all of his antics and tactics at the press conference and leading into this fight. Was that the case? Well, I think that that was the demeanor coming in. And uh, that motivated me because, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, pick fights I don't mess with anybody when I feel like I'm back in the corner I want to defend myself you smothered him tonight from start to finish you fought on the inside why was that your tactic and why was that something that we hadn't seen much of in the past well honestly the last eight weeks of training camp that wasn't you know that wasn't the game plan we planned on going inside you know throughout the fight but not as much as we did and after the second round you know green was he obliged me so I said man okay he wants to fight inside, so this is where it's going to be. And he, he did a great job. He hung in there longer than I thought he was. Great job. Come on. Did you expect a tougher fight? Because you certainly really didn't get I one. He only connected on six punch, uh, six combos. I absolutely did. I, did. I did expect a little tougher fight, but every fight is tough. I don't care what it looks like. You know, this guy's to be respected, and you got to be mentally alert. And that takes a lot of energy out of you. So I, we were just well prepared, and I take my hat off to him. And I hope he does well in the second round of the Super 6. So now you advance, and you move into the semifinals, but you've got a third-round fight first against your buddy Andre Durrell who was watching with us tonight. Will it be difficult to fight your friend on September 25th? Yeah, it will be. Um, I've been putting it off saying we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We're here, so we'll have to deal with it and uh, do what we got to do. He said he learned a lot tonight watching you. Uh, the first thing he learned is that he has to be first. He can't allow you to do what you just did to Green by having every opportunity tonight watching you. Uh, the first thing he learned is that he has to be first. He can't allow you to do what you just did to Green by having every opportunity first. How do you combat that? I don't know. You know, I, I don't like giving up too much. We just got to go back to the drawing board. I'm going to take a rest. A long training camp, mentally and physically grueling. I just want to rest, and then we'll regroup and figure out how to get past the next round. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Let's bring in Alan Green. Alan, what, what happened tonight, and how do you assess your, your performance? Well, first off, I'd like to uh, be happy that everybody came out uh, 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 healthy. You know what? Andre Wolf had a hell of a fight. I don't want to harp on what he did too much, but the three training camps that I've done really, really sat me, and I hit a hard wall in training camp, and I feel a, I feel a little worn out. And uh, I came down to 66, which is a little lower than what I expected, so by the time I got in the ring, I felt dead. So those two pounds, did that deplete you in, in a certain way? It did, but you got to understand, I've had three training camps since uh, December. So that kind of really, 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 I mean, it really made me feel, feel weak. You can ask my trainer. I had to stop running about three weeks ago because I was feeling so weak in training camp, and I wasn't feeling right. And I knew coming into this fight, I wasn't feeling my best. 
And Andre Ward showed me a lot of things, a lot of experience, things in there. A lot of things that I know about, a lot of things I can deal with, but a lot of, a lot of things I couldn't react to. Because I, I maybe, like I said, because I felt extremely weak. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. That's just how I felt. I mean, I, I came in, I weighed in about 166. I weighed in about 166. And you try to, when your stomach shrinks that much and you overtrain, you try to eat and, and fill yourself back up and, and put all the nutrients back in your body, but you just don't feel right. You don't feel the same. So what I have to do is go back to the drawing board, get back to being the old Allen Green, get myself on a strict, strict diet uh, regimen for the next fight in the Super 6 to make 68. Because this time, I mean, I trained hard, but I don't think I did it effectively. I don't think I did it the right way, and it showed tonight. Did you expect him to fight you and to smother you inside the way he did? Yeah, no, we said he would. We knew he was going to do that. But we knew he, wouldn't, uh, we knew he wasn't really going to run. After the first round, like I told him, I talked to him after the fight. I said, I said you can tell I was weak. He said, yeah. So uh, we, knew, we knew he wasn't going to run. I mean, I saw him looking at my legs during the, uh, when they announced us, and he could tell my legs were a little shaky, so I knew he was going to come at me. All right, Alan, we look forward to your fight with Mikel oh, yeah. Kessler. Thank you. Back to the champion. You now advance to the semis. Does that change your approach at all? Congratulations, first of all. Does it change your approach in any way, knowing that you will move forward regardless of the outcome of the next Not fight? Not really. I won't let up one bit. And uh, I was aware that a win here would get me into the semifinals. And my competitors, they had a few things to say online. And I, I, I understand why, but I didn't want to oblige them. I wanted to pull away from the pack. But that won't affect anything. I have you got your belt to defend. I got my, I got my belt to defend. That, that's number one. The tournament will take care of itself. Andre, congratulations. We'll Thank see you, you in a couple months. Thank have you. Have a good summer. Thank you. All right, Gus, down to you. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Let's take a look at the statistics for Ward versus Green. So revealing, and the number of punches, of course, is the key number there, and the fact that in the combinations landed, a huge edge for Andre Ward, Antonio. Uh, it, was a land, it was a landslide, and uh, Andre Ward put in the work. Alan Green didn't. Whether he was weak or not, it showed that it, you know he was out of his class tonight, and he has to go back to the drawing board and get ready for Mikhail Kessler. And the standings now for the Super 6 World Boxing Classic as Andre Ward retains his title and heads into the semifinals. And he creates some separation. Uh, yes, I, Arthur Abraham has his three points, and he's got one more chance to add on to that. But Andre Ward uh, ahead of the pack and headed to the semifinals. Gus Johnson, along with Al Bernstein and the world champion Antonio Tarver. And Al, let's start with you. What a great performance by just a terrific champion I mean he he shows consistently that he knows how to tweak his game bring something new to the table Andre Ward very deserving of uh, the advancement into the semifinals well, you know you you said it right Gus it's the fact that he diversifies his attack he tweaks it he finds different ways to win based upon the opponent in front of him he and his trainer, Virgil Hunter, have got it going in the right direction. And you can't say more about a young fighter than the fact that he can rework what he does for every fight. It's very special. Very special fighter. But the next time he fights, there's a good chance that he could be, for the first time in this tournament, on foreign soil. And it will be against his former Olympic teammate, Andre Durrell. Champ, as for Alan Green, a lot of excuses. You talked about that. We saw it at the end of the fight tonight. He said that he came in light. He said that uh, he was drained, but uh, we have seen him make some excuses about uh, fights in which he hasn't performed very well in the past. Yeah, basically, you know, you just need to do away with all that, Alan. You're still a great fighter. You got to believe in yourself, and you got to take it upon yourself to do the work, come into great shape, mentally and physically. You're not going to be able to bully these guys at this level. You're going to have to put in the work and become a better fighter. You got a training camp to do that and get ready for Mikhail Kessler, and we want to see the best Alan Green the next time out. Now, in uh, uh, one thing uh, we would also like to talk about is you, Champ. I mean, uh, you have been uh, with us for quite a while now. What's on the horizon for you? You know, we have seen you fight at light heavy, you, where you won your world titles. Uh, there have there has been some speculation that you might move up to uh, cruiserweight. Where are you going? Well, I definitely wanted to move up to cruiserweight. There's one guy in particular that I wanted to fight, but unfortunately, he's in interested in uh, uh, unburying dead men. So I feel and like that will be Danny Green. <laughs> yeah. So I feel if I'm going to stay in the, in the game of boxing and give it my all, I got to set big goals for myself. And as you see, I'm looking a little full right now. So <laughs> I'm going to put on some muscle, and the champ is going heavyweight. So the Clisco's and David Hay, be on the lookout because I'm coming. All right. 
Antonio Tarver moving up to fight with the big boys. So for Al Bernstein and the world champion Antonio Tarver, I'm Gus Johnson. And this has been a very, very interesting evening. Once again, Andre Ward defending his title for the first time in his hometown. Does it in spectacular fashion, fighting outside and inside, defeating Alan Green with the unanimous decision. I'm Gus Johnson reminding you there's more information on the Super 6 World Boxing Classic as well as all the upcoming Showtime Sports events on our website at sports.show.com. Plus, you can also follow us on Twitter and check out our Facebook page for up-to-the-minute news and everything Showtime has to offer. Andre Ward surprised us at least as he decided to fight inside he used his shoulders a great left hook and a beautiful right uppercut to completely dominate Alan Green and defend his title for the first time here in Oakland California SOG the son of God does it again remains undefeated and Andre Ward right now, the leader in the clubhouse in the Super 6 World Boxing Classic. For Al Bernstein, Antonio Tarver, Jim Gray, and our entire crew, Gus Johnson, saying so long from Oaktown. Thank you for watching the Super 6 World Boxing Classic here on Showtime.